Hello and welcome, Kevin. Thanks so much for joining us for this timely conversation. As many of us are well aware, there's been a concerning rise in anti-LGBTQ plus rhetoric and legislation. And at the same time, we've seen landmark wins worth celebrating and amplifying. Today, we're talking with Kevin Jennings, the CEO of Lambda Legal, the powerhouse organization that's been representing LGBTQ plus people in a court of law for 50 plus years. So I have a series of questions for you, Kevin, the first of which is there's obviously plenty of research showing that the mental health of LGBTQ plus people is disproportionately impacted at work and by work. What have you seen in terms of workplace discrimination cases? It is incredibly stressful to be LGBTQ plus right now. There have been nearly 1,300 anti-LGBTQ plus bills introduced into 48 different state legislatures over the last two years, and nearly 140 of them have become law in 24 different states. So that's creating a lot of pressure on LGBTQ plus employees and LGBTQ plus people in general. In fact, the Trevor Project, which is a suicide prevention organization that targets LGBTQ plus youth, found last year that seven 71% of LGBTQ plus youth were reporting high levels of anxiety due to all of this uh, legislative activity. And that number spikes to 86% when you consider trans and non-binary youth. There's no reason to think that adults feel any differently. So LGBTQ plus employees right now are feeling under siege, coast to coast, and that is definitely affecting their sense of comfort in the workplace. Yeah, Absolutely. I can imagine even myself watching the news happen out in the world. It does cause me to question, even though I live in a very kind of safe and open and accepting workplace at Mindshare Partners, it does make me question as I venture forth out into the world, sometimes am I even safe from um, kind of this growing anti-LGBT plus rhetoric? Second question for you. A, oh, oh, yeah. Can ahead. I actually respond to that? Yeah, totally. Um, I think it's important to recognize that this is a national phenomenon. 48 states have considered anti-LGBTQ plus bills in the last two years. Only New York and Delaware have not. And there's no place that's fully safe to be an LGBTQ plus person right now. Here in Brooklyn, where I live, last year, a young man was dancing at a gas station. Some other young men approached him and said he was being too gay. He kept dancing and he was stabbed to death. So violence and discrimination remains a fact of life for LGBTQ plus people, even in places like Brooklyn, New York. And every LGBTQ plus person right now feels some level of anxiety in relation to the discrimination, the hostile legislation and the ongoing violence against our community. A hundred percent. So obviously, employers do and have a significant role in mitigating this. In fact, not just mitigating the negative, but kind of creating the positive. So is there any advice you have for employers who are still committed to supporting their LGBT plus workers on how they navigate this increasingly hostile and complicated diversity and equity corporate landscape? Yeah, I think employers need to recognize that silence will not be read as neutrality. Silence will be read as complicity and consent to what is happening. So the worst thing you can do right now is to try to be neutral. The most important thing you can do is send affirmative messages to your employees. There's a variety of ways you can do that by having your company speak up on these issues, by having your company donate to LGBTQ plus organizations, by simply having an LGBTQ plus employee resource group and supporting that organization and its programming. But right now, a company has to engage in what I call distinguishing behavior. Most people in the LGBTQ plus community do not automatically assume that their employer is on their side. So if you want to distinguish yourself as a supportive organization, you have to engage in behaviors that say, hey, we are behind you and we have your back. So those distinguishing behaviors, some of which I mentioned, like supporting an LGBTQ plus ERG at your organization, are absolutely critical right now because silence will be read as not neutrality, but complicity. Definitely. Uh, it's funny. I love the term distinguishing behaviors. I kind of use the term signals because I remember when I was fresh out of college going to a workplace, I would look for those signals of what are the things that my employer is saying or doing that hint at that safety? Because I'm going to go in operating on the assumption of the lack of safety. Absolutely. There's a reason why LGBTQ plus people assume a lack of safety. It's because we've never been safe. Mm 
So if you want to create a safe environment, you're going to have to take affirmative steps because LGBTQ plus people come in with a trust deficit with institutions. Remember, this is a country where it was still illegal to be LGBTQ plus in 16 states until Lambda Legal won at the Supreme Court in 2003 in Lawrence versus Texas. So it's within the lifetime of all of your employees virtually that it was illegal literally to be in a same sex relationship. LGBTQ plus people haven't forgotten that. And the current wave of anti-LGBTQ plus legislation has created a tremendous fear in the community that we're going to be dragged back to the bad old days when we were exiled as criminals from society. 100%. And it can be scary kind of staring down that barrel. But obviously, it's not all in the negative. There are absolutely wins worth celebrating. So in your experience, in your work, observing kind of the movement in this space, is there a win you would point to that is worth celebrating that impact LGBT, LGBTQ plus workers? Well, I think there's a lot of exciting wins, particularly for workers. The 2020 Supreme Court decision in Bostock versus Clayton County, which made it federal law that you cannot fire people from their jobs based on their gender identity and their sexual orientation, was a huge boost to the community because every LGBTQ person I've talked to has a fear that at some point this would be used against them at work. If it is used against you, it's now against the law. And you should contact Lambda Legal's help desk and we will support you. Uh, it's easy to remember. It's one eight three three. I say gay. Um, so it's easy to contact us. And remember, the Supreme Court has said it is illegal to enjoy to practice employment discrimination based on gender identity and sexual orientation. That is now the law of the land. 100% love the plug too. And sometimes that realm of legislation can sometimes feel like anti discrimination that is baseline. But in cases like these, those legislative wins are so important kind of fallbacks in the case of kind of companies and organizations that really don't follow suit and don't follow those principles. Yeah, a lot of people are under the impression that there's a comprehensive civil rights law that protects LGBTQ plus people. There isn't. The Equality Act, which was first introduced in 1974, 50 years ago, has yet to pass Congress. So there are court decisions such as the Bostock decision, which protect us from employment discrimination. But there are still other areas where we are vulnerable to discrimination, like housing and public accommodations. And it's time for Congress to act to ensure that there is is no discrimination in America on any subject based on gender identity or sexual orientation. Call your congressperson. And if you're an employer, make it clear that you consider discrimination to be bad for business and you want to see the Congress of America make it illegal. Love it. All right. Last question for you, getting a little bit more personal as someone working at a nonprofit focused on advocacy in such a critical issue area. How do you take care of your mental health? You know, one of the things that I draw a lot of inspiration from are people who preceded me in history, you know, such as Jose Sadia. Jose Sadia was a Latino drag queen who in 1961 ran for the San Francisco Board of Supervisors as an out gay man, 17 years before Harvey Milk. And I think about the courage it took to do that in an era when being a same-sex relationship was still illegal in all 50 states. And I think back to my um, LGBTQ plus forebearers, and I think if they could keep up the fight, we can keep up the fight. And I also think about LGBTQ plus youth. They deserve a better world than the one they're getting. And I'm determined to help make that happen for them. So I draw inspiration from my forebearers and from the people who will follow me. I believe that we can make America a better place. I've seen it happen during my lifetime, and I hope it will continue to happen for decades to come. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Kevin, again, for this very timely, very current and ongoing conversation and issue area. Any final words before we adjourn? When people feel like they belong, they do better at work. And if employers take affirmative steps to make it clear that LGBTQ plus employees belong in the workplace, they will improve their mental health and improve their job performance. So addressing this issue is good for business. That is the bottom line. Perfect. Thank you so much, Kevin. It was, it was a joy talking to you. Thank you so much, Bernie. I really enjoyed it.